D&D has been around long enough to become a cultural touchstone of sorts. It has enough name recognition that most people have some idea of what it is, even if they haven't actually played the game. So it's not surprising that Hollywood has tried to turn it into a movie. Now, D&D has been turned into a movie before, back in the early 2000s, when the massive success of Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter made fantasy the popular genre of the day, and studios were trying to jump on the bandwagon. That first D&D film was a mediocre effort, but I enjoyed it well enough. It's a decent film to have on when you've got nothing better to do, although I wouldn't claim it's great or anything. It received a direct-to-DVD sequel a couple of years later that few people saw, and it was a notable step down from the first film. Now, with D&D's 50th anniversary just around the corner in 2024, Hasbro, which owns Wizards of the Coast, the company that publishes D&D, has produced a new D&D film, D&D Honor Among Thieves. But is this new D&D film a step up from previous efforts? Does it do a good job of capturing the feel of a D&D campaign? Or is it just another tedious CGI fest that offers little to engage the audience beyond a lot of spectacle? Hello everyone, and welcome back to Classic Comics. This is my review of D&D Honor Among Thieves. There will be spoilers in this, but I'll warn you before I start in with spoilers later in the video. Now, for those who may be D&D fans, this film is set in the Forgotten Realms, one of D&D's more popular campaign settings. The plot involves a group of characters, four adventurers led by Edrin, a bard played by Chris Pine, Holga, a barbarian played by Michelle Rodriguez, Simon, a half-elf sorcerer played by Justice Smith, and Doric, a tiefling druid played by Sophia Lillis. They plot to steal a treasure hoard from the villain played by Hugh Grant, a former con man named Forge Fitzroy, and his female assistant, a wizard named Safina. For the most part, the cast is fine in their roles. The film doesn't really ask too much of them. The film is really more of a romp. It's never taking itself too seriously. It very much follows the MCU style of movie making, keeping things pretty fast-paced, occasional action set pieces that are fairly well done, lots of CGI to keep the audience engaged, lame humor throughout the film, and of course the signature MCU Miss Sandry. You might remember a few weeks back, the writers of the film said that they deliberately emasculated the male characters, and yeah, they did. Edrin and Simon are both wimps for the most part, and they're ineffective in a fight, while Holga and Doric, the female characters, are both confident and formidable in combat. When we first meet Edrin, he's being held in a prison, and he's knitting. Yeah, he's knitting a pair of mittens. Hugh Grant as the villain Forge is fine. Like the heroes, he isn't really asked to do much. The fact that Hugh Grant is the villain kind of gives you an idea of how not serious this movie is. So the plot involves the heroes breaking into a vault to steal some treasure from Forge, who rules the kingdom of Neverwinter. I quite enjoyed the plot for the most part. There are some surprising twists that I never saw coming, and for the most part the plot makes sense, although there are a few contrivances in a couple of places, but I didn't mind them. This is strictly a popcorn film. It isn't trying to say anything or deliver any kind of particular message, at least beyond men suck and women are awesome. Whether you enjoy the movie will come down to how much tolerance you have for the anti-male slant of the movie. There's actually a lot to enjoy in this film, and I find it very frustrating because I wanted to like it, but the way the movie treats its male characters really made that difficult. Overall, I give the movie about two dragons out of five. Now, let's get into spoilers. So, Chris Pine as Edrin the Bard is the leader of the group. His character is a former Harper, a group of good guys in the Forgotten Realms. He had a wife and a small daughter, but he left the Harpers after his wife was killed by the Red Wizards of Fae, a cabal of necromancers. He is then told by Forge of a magic item that can resurrect his wife, which is held in a vault where the Harpers keep a lot of the evil magic items they capture from the Red Wizards and other bad guys. So he and a few others try to break into the vault to steal this item, but it's all a setup. Sophina, who is a wizard working with Forge, is actually there to steal another item, a kind of magic horn. And then after she's got it, she casts a spell 
that traps Edrin and Holga in the vault, leaving them to take the blame for the crime. Now, two years later, they get out of jail, and Edrin wants to reunite with his daughter, Kira. They discover that Forge now rules Neverwinter, and he has adopted Kira as his own daughter, more or less. Now, when they broke into the vault, Forge was able to take the item that Edrin needs to resurrect his wife, but Forge refuses to hand it over, and he tells his guards to kill them, but they escape. Now, there's this event coming up called the High Sun Games that's going to take place in a few days, and there's going to be a lot of wealthy people from all over the kingdom coming to see them, and there will be a lot of wagering and numerous prizes given out at the games. Forge is keeping all this stuff in his own vault, including the magic item that Edrin needs, so he and Holga decide to break in and steal the treasure. They need someone who knows magic, so they find Simon, a sorcerer, who's also a half-elf. Now, Simon's character is lacking in confidence, it turns out, and isn't very good at magic, surprise, surprise. They also pick up Doric, a druid who Simon has a crush on, but of course, she has no interest in him, so he's mostly pining for her throughout the movie. The vault has this magic seal on it, and Simon tells them they need a magic item called the Helmet of Disjunction. But it was lost long ago, and no one knows where it is. Members of Holga's tribe were the last to see it, so they go to her people, and we meet her former lover or boyfriend or husband or whatever, a halfling played by Bradley Cooper, of all people. And like the other males, he's kind of a wuss. He's like a house husband, basically. He stayed home, and he kept the house, and he cooked, and he tended the garden while Holga was out adventuring. Anyway, they wind up going to a mass graveyard that was the scene of a great battle in the past, and using a magic spell to question some of the dead soldiers to learn what happened to the helmet. Now, this scene is actually pretty funny. They can only ask five questions to a dead soldier before the spell wears off, and they completely waste their questions on the first soldier. It was actually pretty funny. Eventually, they learn that the helmet was given to a paladin named Zink, I think his name was. And uh, they find him, and he leads them to the helmet, which is hidden down in the Underdark. Zink is the only male character in this movie who isn't a clown or an idiot or a villain. They then go back to Neverwinter to rob the vault, but Simon can't use the helmet to break the magic seal on it because, you know, he's a male and he's incompetent, so they have to find another way in. Now, they have a wand that can create magic portals, so they devise a plan to use it to get into the vault. They can place a portal on any item, so they put one on a painting, and then they use the portal wand to put the portrait into a carriage that is filled with treasure and is bound for the vault. And uh, they do this while the carriage is en route, while it's moving. It's actually a pretty fun sequence, and I really enjoyed it. I thought it was one of the better parts of the movie. They then plan to rob the vault while the High Sun games are going on and everyone is distracted. Now, I'm not going to get bound up in all the details, but they get captured and they get put into the game, which is a kind of gladiatorial type event where everyone is put into this maze in an arena and they have to get out while they're being pursued by various monsters. I won't give away the end, but Forge turns out to not be the real villain. He's actually just a figurehead. And the real villain is his female assistant, Sophina. So even the male villain is incompetent, it turns out. Now, as a longtime D&D fan, I really wanted to enjoy the film. And it was fun spotting some elements from the game, such as all the monsters. It was fun seeing an owlbear or a displacer beast or a gelatinous cube or places in the realms getting name dropped. Probably the biggest Easter egg is during the High Sun games, when the main characters are in the arena, there are two other groups of adventurers in there with them, and some of them are obviously the characters from the D&D cartoon. They don't get any lines, but they do feature pretty prominently in the whole arena sequence, which is pretty fun. And honestly, I <laughs> kind of felt like I would rather have seen that movie rather than seen this one. What ticks me off the most, however, is during the end credits, at one point the screen says, based on Dungeons and Dragons published by Hasbro. There's no mention of Gary Gygax or Dave Arneson, who actually created the game. Hasbro has made it pretty clear over the last few years that they pretty much hate the creators of D&D, and they hate the people who played the game before they took ownership of it. And 
that just really pisses me off more than anything. So honestly, I hope this thing bombs. It's too bad, really, because there's a good movie in there somewhere, but they just can't stop bashing men and bashing gamers for even a minute, so I can't give this thing a positive review. What did you think of D&D Honor Among Thieves? Did you like it or not like it? Do you agree with my review? Let me know in the comments, and please like this video before you leave. Also, please sub to the channel and hit the bell, and I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.